Hello and welcome to today's video about Grandstream GWN 7600 series access points. In this video, we will take a look at how to plan, deploy, and optimize a wireless network made of GWN access points. We're going to cover some high level steps involved in a predictive site survey before deploying the GWN access points, as well as the steps that should be taken in a post deployment survey. We will also go uh, over certain Wi-Fi features that you can enable to improve the Wi-Fi performance of the users. There are multiple ways of running a site survey. And in this video, I will focus on predictive site survey, which is more convenient when designing a wireless network without having to be on site. The first step in the predictive site survey is to study the floor plan or blueprint of the location to gather a variety of information such as facility layout, and uh, area size. The installer needs to identify the type of wireless applications and devices that users will have. For example, delay sensitive applications such as video conferencing requires enough bandwidth and QoS configuration. Also understanding the construction materials in the facility can help predict signal propagation and signal strength to prevent any issues in the wireless coverage and speed. In addition to coverage, it is important to consider client capacity needs by identifying the number of wireless clients and the type of applications they will be using to uh, understand how much bandwidth is required. Coverage and capacity are crucial to deciding how many APs will be deployed and where to place them. In this scenario, for example, three APs will be deployed in the area where there are many cubicles to reduce the contention over the wireless medium. Selecting the right AP for the deployment is also important, and this is done based on the capacity and speed requirements of the wireless network. No one who will be using the wireless network can help the installer segment the wireless network into groups for organizational purposes. For example, if a guest network is required, the installer needs to consider creating a dedicated SSID and assigning it to the AP in the desired area, such as a waiting room or a training room. So after studying the floor plan and the business requirements, the installer needs to conduct a walkthrough to confirm the surveyed area and check for unnoticed details that are not marked on the coverage map. There are plenty of third-party uh, software applications that can be used during the uh, site survey uh, process. So knowing the capacity requirements of the location will help the installer plan a good ratio of users per access point while allowing for future growth. Grandstream offers multiple GWN models with different capabilities to accommodate the capacity needs of any deployment. Starting with low density access points, there is GWN 7605, which offers two spatial streams with multi-user MIMO technology, and it supports up to 100 concurrent clients with an aggregate wireless throughput of 1.27 gigabits per second. Next, we have GWN 7615 for medium density, and it includes three spatial streams. It supports up to 200 wireless clients, and it delivers a wireless data rate of 1.75 gigabits per second. For high user density environments, we have Wi-Fi 6 capable GWN 7664, which offers four spatial streams in an aggregate throughput of 3.55 gigabits per second. This model can handle up to 512 concurrent clients. So selecting the model of GWN access points to deploy uh, usually depends on the capacity and the speed requirements of the location or area. To locally manage the GWN access points, all enterprise Grandstream access points come with an embedded controller that provides a centralized management of up to 50 uh, GWN access points. The process of designating an access point as the controller, you, you simply uh, choose one of the access points and use it as the controller of other GWN access points in your local area network just by simply logging into the web interface. 
the integrated controller is free and built into the access point so there are no licensing fees associated with that when managing multiple wireless networks uh, across multiple locations Grandstream offers the cloud-based management platform GWN.cloud it provides a centralized management and complete control over GWN access points without added cost or complexity it is a free service GWN that cloud uh, offers scalability for wireless networks of any size because it has no limit to the number of GWN access points and wireless networks that you can actually create using your profile another benefit of using GWN that cloud is the zero touch provisioning of all Grandstream GWN access points from one single interface it is basically plug and play so going back to the deployment requirements and after the installer puts the wireless network in place post deployment survey is recommended to ensure that the wireless network covers the whole desired area and that there are no issues with signal strength and speed looking at the following heat map it appears that the access points cover the whole area however there are some adjustments that still need to be made the first thing that is obvious here is uh, we have co-channel interference which is the result of having two overlapping access points transmitting over the same channel in this example the channel numbers are represented with colors for easy understanding the problem with co-channel interference is that devices connected to these two APs will be competing for the same wireless medium which can negatively impact the uh, Wi-Fi performance one approach to fix this issue is to ensure that the transmission power of the APs does not extend beyond the desired area this approach is usually required when you have um, a small area with multiple uh, access points such as this area with multiple call center agents where we have three uh, APs uh, deployed. Uh, GWN access points uh, include the option to adjust the transmit power of access points. So uh, adjusting the transmit power where it is necessary does not uh, only reduce the chances of having a co-channel interference, but it also prevents having sticky clients, which are basically devices that cling to an access point with the poor connection even when it is closer to an access point with a stronger signal so it is a good practice to reduce the transmit power of the access points that only need to cover a small area such as a conference room training room or small area where multiple APs are deployed the next step is to verify channel reuse to avoid the use of uh, overlapping channels especially for 2.4 gigahertz um, which only gives us three non-overlapping channels to prevent co-channel interference from happening GWN access points have an embedded feature called DCA or dynamic channel assignment which allows the access point to monitor all available channels and decide on the best one to use examining RSSI using one of the Wi-Fi analyzer applications ensure that Wi-Fi signal is strong throughout the location GWN dashboard also provides information regarding the RSSI value of the connected clients a tool that you can use to uh, uh, monitor the current signal strength of the wireless uh, stations in addition there are some Wi-Fi features that an installer might enable to improve the Wi-Fi performance so let's take a look at these uh, features so first we have the uh, uh, feature RM which stands for radio resource management and it is used to dynamically control the transmit power of an access point in conjunction with dynamic channel assignment RM uses TPC or transmit power control to reduce the interference caused by an overreaching uh, signal as shown in this example DCA or dynamic channel assignment 
ensures that each access point is using a non-overlapping channel for transmission while TPC reduces the transmit power when other APs are within range. When delay sensitive applications or devices such as voice or video are deployed, it is a good practice to enable voice enterprise, which is designed to improve the roaming experience of wireless clients. This feature is built uh, based on three 802.11 standards. We have 802.11K, 802.11R, and 802.11V. To take advantage of this feature, the wireless client needs to support these standards. Some legacy standards might not support them. You can also choose to enable only one standard. For example, you can enable 802.11R, which makes the uh, authentication process faster. In wireless communication, only one device can send or receive at a time. So when you have two devices transmitting at different rates, the higher rate device will get impacted because it will have to wait for the slower rate device to receive or transmit its block of data. And basically this slows down the higher rate device because uh, it has to wait longer. So to equally divide the airtime between devices, GWN access points support the Wi-Fi feature called airtime fairness uh, that you can enable on the GWN access point so that fast rate or higher rate devices won't get impacted. However, the downside of enabling airtime fairness is that the slower devices will get even slower because now they have less airtime for transceiving. The next Wi-Fi feature that you should enable with caution is band steering, which essentially places the wireless stations on a prioritized band. Since all grand stream access points are dual band, they work on both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. You might use band steering uh, for example, to prioritize 5 gigahertz to ensure higher data rates, or you can prioritize 2.4 gigahertz to ensure good coverage range. However, uh, band steering can be uh, a problem for roaming devices, and this is due to the fact that some devices might try to connect to a different band when the signal uh, gets weaker during the roaming uh, process. For example, you might prioritize 5 gigahertz and the wireless station will try to connect to 2.4 gigahertz when it sees that 5 gigahertz signal is getting weaker, which can lead to an interruption or uh, slowness during the roaming uh, process. So band steering is usually recommended for static clients or when you are sure that all devices will be transmitting over a specific band, like something that you can configure on the wireless clients. When designing the uh, wireless network into uh, segments for uh, organizational purposes, you dedicate a special SSID or VLAN for each group. The Wi-Fi feature client isolation can be useful in the way that it can uh, restrict access to other devices in the same network. In this example, client isolation is enabled to block users connected to guest Wi-Fi from reaching other resources in the same local area network. And the users can only access the internet. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave us a comment below if you have a request for any future videos. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up to date with all our videos. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.